She needs to be locked up, man. Bro, these episodes are five minutes long. All right, My Hero Season 7, Episode 8. It looks like we're about to add to the very complicated Todoroki lore, specifically about Darby slash Toya. I am very excited about this. It's really funny that it's not really something I've thought about, right? How exactly did Toya become Darby? You know, what happened specifically? And my head's gone some pretty interesting places in the week I've been waiting for this episode, thinking about what could possibly happen. The idea I threw out last episode was like, is he some kind of Nomu? Just the way he was talking to Shoto about, he's still his older brother in this instance, but there's just something about the way he's saying it, man, and the staples start falling away from the stitches on his face. I guess I just assumed that, you know, he, he was in a really bad way. Uh, someone found him, stitched him back up. Was it the doctor? Was it all for one? I don't know. I just assumed. But I've really felt the hype and the build up this week uh, for whatever happens here. So I'm really excited to see what happens. And of course, Deku is still on his way, hopefully to where Bakugo and the rest of the fighters are trying to hold off Shigaraki and his crazy arm um, quirk singularity situation. Like and subscribe. Check out the Patreon for early access access for the other shows that I'm doing if you're interested. With all that being said, enjoy the video. It is the doctor, okay, I thought it was. Yeah, here we go. Seeds born warped. Vessels. Still such a good shot, man. Oh yeah, here we go, come on. Have we gone back? We're back. What happened, man? Such a messed up family at this point, man. Just imagine what that would be like, man. There's his jaw that they find later on. Oh, hold on now. Oh, look at him. That's gotta be all for one. Two flash fires? Okay, okay. 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 What is this room? Hearing his younger voice here, but looking like Darby. What? Mr. Sunny. Did the doctor do something to him similar to Shigaraki? See, he did want to go home, man. He was still making excuses for him. Oh, don't, mate. You can't do it like this now. Sense oh Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, it's all gone, man. That would be so much to take in. He's still on that man. Inflamed. Okay. Yeah, he burned the whole place down. Vessels for the demon lord, hold on. Hmm. 
ダミの体は目覚めて動き始めた以上。あはなぜ生きているわしはダビのシーンを聞きたく、二人きりになる機会をこしらえた。あれからどう生きたのじゃこの生きる屍を見てると、あんたらが俺をどうしたかったのか、戻ったのは、葬式にちょうどいい場所だったからだ。死にゆく体をただ遠さの炎だけで踏みとどまらせてきた。What? Holding it together with the flames of his resentment. Does he just hate the situation with his dad so much that that's how he's been able to stay alive? These are the kind of situations that I understand a lot better, like after the fact, after watching again. But to see Toya like come out of that and still be making excuses for Endeavor and still wanting to prove himself to him and seeing that Nomu there as well, man. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Oh, look, he's Bro, look at this scene. Yeah, he has no pain reception. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I saw this in the intro, man. I realized it was Darby. Right. Oh, look at him, man. Including himself. Dude, this is pretty dope, man. Some of these shots in here, man, are epic of Darby and then to Shoto. Warped the view. Look at him, man. Hold on now, strap in. Look at him, man. Yeah. 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 Hell Spider! Man was watching and studying. What you got, Shoto? Hold on now, we're getting into it now. He's lost his mind. He's absolutely gone. Dude, the way they are drawing him. And Shoto is getting the shit beating out of him. Oh, look, he's, a, he's an actual demon. Half baked doll? Oh, shit. I think those words ain't gonna do much to Shoto at this point, man. Yeah, he knows all this, man. Hold on, look at this! Good, good. Oh, dude, this thing is so sick, man. Oh. It makes perfect sense. Mm, you're a family. Half-baked brother. 
Facts, facts. Hey, yo! <laughs> Why do we have to do this in this moment? Yeah, 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 yeah. Something absolutely epic is about to happen, man. Neutralizing. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Even the way his hair is here, man. Look, look, it's full circle, man. Phosphor! Icebound crash, look at this. Cold flames, pale blade, any more names? Soundtrack everything, man. Yep, yes, sir. Uh oh, uh oh. Mm, it's a good line. And we've heard this line already, too. Dude, look at him. They passing out from the fire? It's too hot? <laughs> she didn't say that. Dude, what a journey, man, for Shoto. It's always the homies, man. Oh. Oh, look at this man. Oh! Pronounce that. Oh, he done did it. Dude, this image, man. Did, did we kill him? Oh, I, I will never trust a cliffhanger. But the way they constructed that episode with Darby's intent clearly being to die after he could do as much damage to, you know, what he needed to. I would not be shocked if Shoto is the one that's killed Darby, but man, I don't think I have ever been that immersed in a My Hero episode. And it was just the way, it, this is the culmination of like everything that the Todoroki family has been through, obviously specifically Shoto and Darby, but it was the, it was the imagery, the soundtrack, that just might be the, the most well-constructed My Hero episode to date, man. All right, when I recenter myself and I actually think about what My Hero is, um, I'm pretty sure Shoto ha has not killed Darby, right? Heroes, they don't kill, right? And look, I know there's a whole situation going on here and it's incredibly symbolic, but the thing I couldn't get out of my mind was um, Shoto a few episodes ago saying, and they flashed to it this episode as well, him saying he doesn't even know what Toya likes and I was thinking there was going to be some sort of a conversation between them and I thought maybe during the fight but they were both so concluded in how they felt about this situation. Obviously Darby, he has, you know, his whole resentment towards the family. He even said, you know, he was, he was watching Shoto as well, 
not just Endeavor, but even the way that Shoto feels towards Darby, right? Darby has still chosen to burn up all of these people, you know, be a villain and kill and come back with resentment like this. And even though now we can look back with all the context and look at everything Darby went through, even when he woke up three years after Endeavor didn't show up, he couldn't control his flames and he almost killed himself, he was still thinking about his family. He was still thinking about Endeavor. He still wanted to prove himself. And obviously that all comes back to Endeavor, right? That is Endeavor's fault for not being a good parent, for being so caught up in all the things that he has acknowledged at this point. Obviously Darby himself is, is missing, you know, a, a lot of that context. And the context that Darby has is, it, it seems like just one instance. He's gone back home and he's seen, you know, Endeavor training Shoto, uh, I imagine in the same way that he was being trained when he was younger. And he's assumed nothing has changed, which at that point he's probably right about, you know, but so much has happened since then. And that's what I'm talking about when I say he's missing context. But clearly he's been driven mad by this whole situation, right? He wakes up three years later, he ends up burning down, you know, that whole place that he woke up in, which to me was some sort of place that uh, All For One was holding people perhaps with quirks he might want because they were talking about Darby's quirk and they said that All For One, you know, obviously didn't want Darby's quirk because, you know, it was a quirk that led to death, right? At least that's my interpretation of this whole scenario. And like I said during the episode, a lot of these instances here, there's so much going on between watching the visuals, trying to read the subtitles and my mind just has a habit of uh, trying to jump towards like what's going to happen next, right? So these situations I often get a much better read of, you know, when I'm editing or when I do my second watch through later on. And I flirted with the idea of even just like just watching the episode again and then doing like a, a proper breakdown in the discussion, which I would love to do in the future. It, it is a bit more time consuming, but I think it would make for much better quality discussion. So please leave down below in the comments what you think about that as a possibility. And Shoto's ultimate move here, man, uh, with the combination of fire and ice and the way that he's made it his own, that whole full circle moment that happened with, you know, Deku being the one to uh, awaken Todoroki's flames, well, not necessarily awaken them, but help Todoroki be able to use them and not feel like, you know, he was connected to his father in a way. And now we've come all this way and he's made it his own into this own ultimate move, not what Endeavor wanted it for, right? He wanted the ice to cool himself so he could keep using his heat, right? But no, Todoroki says, or Shoto, he's done the opposite. You know, he brings equilibrium to both sides, he says. Not the ice cooling down the heat, it's both of them working together. And just the way it's animated, like that cross, and he also says Darby is their family's cross to bear, so that's potentially an interesting connection. But it just looks sick, even when he's showing it to Deku, right? And his hair's like standing up, like, like the white hair almost looks like icicles and the red obviously like kind of fiery and this whole reinforcement of, of Shoto being the perfect person to fight Darby right because of his abilities and because of what he's created here in his ultimate move Shoto says it to Endeavor even Darby acknowledges it and Darby talking about even though we're brothers but we've gone on such different paths and that warped rails will never cross straight paths there's a lot of talk about you know warped like people and paths in these last two episodes pretty much all to do with Darby but Darby did connect that to some of the other villains last episode and I was thinking a lot about Toga. There was a specific line that popped up in this episode that, that made me think there was some sort of parallel uh, to Toga the previous episode. I have to go and find it. But how Toga is on, she's on such a different path, right? She sees everything differently and she's looking for validation about how she feels and she can't find it, you know, through you know, people like Uraraka and uh, Deku. That she's just accepted that that's what it is and she's turned her back on like that whole possibility almost. At least that's my understanding of, of that from last episode. And now Darby is like the same, right? He's accepted that this is what's happened. This is who he is. He is going to die. And he's just trying to take it all out, like on whoever from his family he can. Endeavor, Shoto, just whoever's in front of him. And the Shoto flashes back, like, through a lot of things that have happened, building up to, like, the the, the big moment of this episode. And his mother telling him that, that he can be who he wants to be, not what Endeavor wants him to be. For. He can be a hero if he wants to be. And then he's looking at Class 1A saying they were always right there. He felt like his family had gone on ahead, but Class 1A, they, they never left anyone behind, man. And they were always there. And it's Endeavor, it's his father who is the last thing he flashes to, like the advice he gave him and Bakugo about store it up. And that's exactly what he does and we get the epic climax. Dude, these shots are just second to none, man. This whole sequence, soundtrack like I've said, everything. And when I watch it again, I think it's pretty clear, right? It's the stop. 
right? You know, Shoto says, please stop, right? And that's something that Uraraka and Deku have both said to Toga, right? Just stop. You know, we're not trying to kill these guys. Like, that's a, that's a hero value, right? We're trying to stop them from doing all this crazy stuff, killing other people. Massive ice explosion, and then Darby is just slumped over Shoto's shoulder. And, and that last shot, that is just like, I have never been, like, I feel like I've said this a lot on the channel, but like, that, that cliffhanger, like, when the outro popped up, man, I have never been so caught off guard, like so in the moment uh, about what's going on. I get nervous when they don't show like Shoto's fist, right? I don't think this is that kind of show, but you know, you see so many other more violent animes where that fist has just gone straight through the torso, right? But I, I don't think this is that show, nor the situation for that, but that's just where my head was at. I, I don't know. But that episode, that's the first episode uh, in, in this arc pretty much that has stayed on one situation, even though we flash back a lot. It was all about the Todorokis, man. It was all about Shoto and Darby. We didn't jump around anywhere to Endeavor and Hawks, to Deku, to Uraraka, to Bakugo, no one. It was just about this. And I talked about like the way it was constructed, man. It was like from the beginning, like we get backstory sprinkled in, then we go back to the present. Then we get a little bit more backstory and then we're back to the present. And the fight is building up this whole time. The soundtrack is building. The animation just keeps getting better and better. And then bang, epic climax perfect cliffhanger and now what what the hell are we doing next episode we better like f find out at least what's happened at the end of this right or like where are we going to go and then we can move on to something else i just need like the conclusion like like, like obviously we stopped darby pretty sure he's not dead i'd be shocked if he was at this point are we going to take him in and if so that's one thing dealt with right now it's just all for one and shigaraki right so that's a pretty significant thing like out of the way like darby was a, a pretty serious part of this plan right like making sure he's dealt with and shoto like he's just he's done it on his own man. But I think I'm gonna stop myself there. This is definitely like an episode I could see myself having a much better discussion quality wise after going back and really like looking through it and breaking it down and kind of formulating how I want to structure it. So if people want me to do that I will gladly make the time but that is fantastic. I am going to enjoy the hell out of editing this and making a dope ass thumbnail because this episode deserves it and I'm gonna sit here for another week until you know whatever happens next week. So I'm gonna leave this one here now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and as always please continue to leave your comments and feedback down below you know i always appreciate it and we'll see you all in the next episode of my hero 